Bine v-am regăsit la Eurodicționar, ne aflăm într-o ediție specială, într-un moment special, într-o perioadă specială, nu numai pentru că e vorba de sărbătoarea Paștelui, ci și pentru că în Republica Moldova se întâmplă tot felul de lucruri, nu de ieri, nu de azi, dar cu siguranță și mâine și poi mâine se vor întâmpla. Lucruri care au nevoie de o explicație, lucruri în care un punct de vedere care vine din partea reprezentantului cele mai mari puteri a lumii în acest moment, adică a Statelor Unite ale Americii, chiar contează. Și atunci... Pentru noi a fost cu adevărat onorant să vedem că la foarte scurt timp după numirea sa la Chișinău, ambasadorul Statelor Unite, domnul James Petit, a acceptat să stea de vorbă cu noi. Motiv pentru care de acum încolo dialogul va merge în limba engleză, vă rog să faceți un efort să citiți subtitrarea și să aflăm ceea ce dorește în acest moment să ne transmită, repet, din punctul de vedere al Statelor Unite ale Americii, excelența sa. Așa că trecem acum în limba engleză. Your Excellency, thank you very much for accepting this interview. Thank you and Pastor Fericit. Mulțumim frumos. Uh, yes, we know that you speak Romanian, but probably for the fluence of the interview, we would rather stay in English. I think it would be much more pleasant for your, uh, for your viewers to hear me speak English than Romanian. Yes, probably. So, sir, let mm -hmm. us get exactly into the middle of the topics. Mm -hmm. um, there is a present political configuration in Moldova which has been confusing for some from the very beginning because the elections were won by three uh, pro-European political parties. Everyone expected them to create a coalition. It did not work. And now in Moldova, there is a uh, minority pro-European coalition which actually created the government. Is this a problem? Is this a keen subject? Would this inflict upon, for example, the Western declarated the ambitions of Moldova? Would they depend too much on the Communist Party, on the Socialist Party, for example, both of them being declared somehow not exactly pro-European? Look, this is a democracy, uh, and what we're seeing is democracy in action. It's very hard to predict whether or not the current minority government will be successful. We certainly hope they will be successful. I've met with the new Prime Minister several times. I have uh, great confidence in him. I think one of the advantages he has is he comes from outside the political class. And uh, he was a successful businessman. And I think some of the talents that made him a successful businessman can contribute to Moldova's success. Any democracy requires negotiation, compromise. Uh, and that is the way this government is going to have to operate. Negotiation compromises, uh, the Swedish model has been brought up several times uh, in Moldova after Moldova had to live with this minority government. But uh, I would like to ask you, sir, would there be any risk, for example, that this minority government would have good intentions that would be somehow undermined by its uh, partners from the opposition? Because the opposition consists not only of the Communist Party or the Socialist one, but also the Liberal Party. Mm -hmm. The Liberals declared themselves pro-Western, pro-NATO, pro-Romanians. Uh, the Socialists declared themselves pro-Eastern, pro-Russians. Mm -hmm. And the Communists, they declared themselves pro-Moldavians mm -hmm. and somehow pro-Western with some amendments. Is this not too um, pathogen, if I may say so? Isn't it complicated to simply exist and govern a country like this? There would be challenges even if there were a majority government. There would still have to be compromise in order to pass legislation through the parliament. Uh, I think that many of the key goals of the current government and of the Moldovan people are shared fairly broadly. Uh, I think the communists can, pl can play a constructive role. They were in power for many years and uh, initiated many uh, activities that, that brought Moldova along on its European trajectory. I think the vast majority of Moldovans do support Moldova's European trajectory. We hope to see uh, continued progress in that direction. It becomes particularly critical now because there are certain things that the government must accomplish in order to comply with the requirements of the association agreement that they signed. There may have to be additional compromise and negotiation that you wouldn't have with majority government, but there would always have to be some of that, regardless of whether it's a minority majority government. Failing uh, in having a majority government, was that a disappointment 
for the Western society, and I mean now the European Union and the United States, for example? Or was it simply accepted as a result of a normal democratic process, game, whatever? We're prepared to work with whatever government the people of Moldova elect. Uh, what would be a disappointment is if the current government fails to uh, implement the, ne the necessary reforms that we have been waiting with for so long. As you know, there was a, lo a lengthy period after the uh, November 30th parliamentary elections where there was no government. And uh, we feel that uh, Moldova has lost some very valuable time in introducing the necessary reforms. Uh, we will see. It's too early to tell whether, whether the government will be successful or not in doing that. I've spoken with many people in government. I'm, I've met with many of the new ministers. Everyone seems very intent in, in accomplishing the necessary reforms, and we want to support that effort. On the other hand, uh, speaking about current events, we've already seen that the government had to assume its responsibility for the budget. Mm -hmm. For example, that was already criticized by the opposition. There is an impeachment motion already on the line. That would somehow suggest that big troubles are ahead because there will be local elections, there, already have been, there, or, there has already been elected a new Bashkan in Gagauzia. Mm -hmm. um, what's to be expected next? Will there be, I don't know, will enough to continue with implementations of the requirements, for example? Will, will they be able to do that? Budgets are always very difficult to pass. My country is a, is a, is a very good example of how difficult it can be. Uh, that said, uh, I do understand that the government is uh, proposing uh, what is bound to be a very controversial budget on its own authority. Uh, many of the measures will not be popular because they require a certain amount of sacrifice and austerity. This is absolutely essential in order to uh, get Moldova on the proper path to meet the preconditions, for example, of the, of the International Monetary Fund, all of which are very necessary steps for what will eventually be to the benefit of the Moldovan people, which is a more prosperous uh, country with a diversified economy uh, linked to the European Union and other markets. Let's speak a, a bit about uh, the Gagos Yeri, the mm -hmm. Gagos autonomy. There is a new Bashkan. Mm -hmm. Irina Vlach belongs now to the uh, Socialist Party, which is a pro-Russian, uh, declared pro-Russian uh, party, which actually seems to think and uh, create strategies not in Kishinev but in Moscow, rather. What's predictable to happen between Kishinev and, uh, and Komrat, for example, under these circumstances? Will Komrat try to stick with Kishinev and respect everything and stay within Moldova or broader separatist tendencies will to be expected. I think it's very important for the central government here in Chisinau to focus on, on all of its ethnic minorities. In the case of Gagauzia, which has had uh, uh, autonomous status uh, really since 1994, from what I understand, it's important that the, that the rules surrounding autonomy be very clearly defined and the respective uh, lines of authority be, be very well defined. Uh, Irina Vlach was elected in uh, what appeared to be a transparent and democratically run election. Uh, I look forward to meeting her soon. Uh, I do know that she received uh, a, a tremendous amount of support uh, from the Socialist Party, among others. I think that one means to be very careful to draw conclusions between who supports a candidate and what the candidate's own political program is. I think that uh, Irina Vlach, much like the Bashkan before her, Mr. Formozal, wants to do what is best for Gagauzia. I think Gagauzia is interested in having a good relationship with Chisinau, but it is very important that the, that the rules governing its autonomy be well defined. The rules should be well defined regarding this autonomy, but on the other hand, there are rumors which would say that somehow, with or without uh, internal will or uh, external interference, um, not only Gagosia but also the regions inhabited by other minorities such as Taraklia inhabited by Bulgarians or Bolts inhabited mostly by Russians and Ukrainians would be interested in creating a common um, project, mm -hmm. a, common, a new common territorial entity. Do you think that this is about to happen and if this would arise what would be the proper reaction to that? It's very difficult uh, to say what, what 
whether or not there will be an expansion in desire for autonomy here in Moldova. I think in general it's good to, to, for people to identify as one nation. Local autonomy is a concept that is completely consistent with democratic principles. I do not see a breaking away of a lot of other regions. We already, of course, have the Transnistria issue, uh, which is being resolved uh, in the, uh, along a different channel. Um, the issues of, of, of places like Taraklia and Baltz, which you mentioned, they, uh, these are significant areas in the sense that they have a, a, a large population that is ethnically different from the majority of Moldova. My country is composed of many, many different ethnicities, and yet we are one united country with a, with, with, with a central government, but our success has been partly to the extent that we have recognized individual state rights to govern locally. We have many programs already with our foreign assistance package for Moldova where we help the, the development of local governance because we think local governance by its very nature is particularly responsive to local needs. Um, whether that takes the form of an autonomous uh, region or not is not as important as the responsiveness of the central government to the needs of the, of the outlying areas and the ethnic minorities. That is indeed uh, probably the most important factor, the respondents of the central government. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there is a fear here about the loyalty of the local governance, if that would arise, mm -hmm. towards uh, Kishinev, for example, as long as there is a consistent bias coming from the outside and especially mm -hmm. from the Russian Federation. And this is how I would slowly try to shift mm -hmm. to this reorganization, reform of the audiovisual in, in Moldova. Mm -hmm. um, you know that there was some debate already upon the opportunity of some changes or measures. I would rather ask you if, would it be in, indeed um, the opportunity for banning some of the foreign uh, TV programs which would affect by their propaganda the internal um, problems of Moldova. Ukraine already did this, Belarus already did this. Should Moldova keep this uh, desiderate in the reformation of the audiovisual? I think we have to be very careful. Uh, media freedom is something that is very much cherished in my country and it does represent European and democratic values to have a free and independent media. Uh, I'm sure you would agree with me. The, um, the danger of Russian propaganda is there. Uh, Russia, the Russian Federation spends an enormous amount of money and effort on promoting its messages. Uh, it is very important that local, that, that, that governments such as the government of the Republic of Moldova, just as with Ukraine, uh, that they be vigilant to counter that message with factually correct information and with outreach. I think the central government here in Moldova uh, could make a much better effort to reach out particularly to the ethnic minorities who are the very same people who, who, who tend to watch Russian language broadcasts, for example. Um, censorship and curbing media access is something that, that in general should be avoided. I don't think that that any of us should try to counter Russian propaganda, which is largely false and which is really a form of psychological warfare, that to counter it with our own propaganda efforts, but rather to, to, to the, the best way to counter Russian propaganda is through economic growth, through democratic principles, to show uh, that a country can be successful following, uh, following a democratic path and then uh, people will begin to see that, that um, as, as things improve, that many of the things that, that the Russian Federation is, is alleging, which, and so much of it is simply false or distorted, um, is really not the path for them to go. But would there be time enough, sir, for this economic revival, for example, that would somehow um, cheer up those regions which would rather look east than towards Kishinev? It will take time. It will take time. Economic growth is not something that will happen overnight. And you're absolutely correct that Russian propaganda is happening now and it is having an impact. You, you eventually have to rely on the wisdom of the people. The Republic of Moldova is blessed with a very educated population, bilingual, trilingual, multicultural. They have complete access to other sources of information. 
And I think that uh, people, uh, this is something that, that can be done in the educational system even, is to, is to teach people how to think analytically and uh, so that they can analyze news and, and determine whether or not this is something that, that, that they really want to be influenced by or that they want to, to, to believe. Well, uh, having that in mind, mm -hmm. let us try to apply this uh, to Gagosia or Transnistria, mm -hmm. in which the population does not really speak anything else but Russian, mm -hmm. does not really want to hear anything else but Russian news, mm -hmm. for example, or Russian talk shows or analyses. Mm -hmm. uh, they would consider that some of the, East, the Western partners of Moldova, such as Romania, mm -hmm. are enemies. You should not ever listen to whatever comes from that part of the world. Uh, how to deal with this situation? How to try to, for example, introduce changes in, in, in education in Transnistria, mm -hmm. as long as there is no real reach of the uh, Kishinev government in those mm -hmm. territories? Well, the case of Transnistria, of course, uh, other, other than the ongoing effort to try to seek a final, a final solution for the, the, the issue of Transnistria and its potential reintegration in the Republic of Moldova, it's very difficult for us to, to guide events there. That's something that the authorities in Transnistria uh, will have to evaluate themselves. Um, in terms of Gagauzia and other parts uh, of the Republic of Moldova, it's very, very important, again, as I said earlier, that the central government do adequate outreach in the appropriate language to explain to them what the, the overall goals of the government are, how they will make life better in Moldova, and more importantly, introduce the necessary reforms to, to actually make those facts on the ground and make Moldova a better place. When people see that they have opportunity and that there is economic growth and that there is transparency in government, which is what the people of Moldova, Moldova deserve, then all of the propaganda in the world, uh, Russian or otherwise, is not going to make a big difference. Well, until that happens, there are some risks. Mm -hmm. Uh, risks that are coming from the unpredictability of the foreign Russian policy mm -hmm. and the Russian interests regarding these parts of Europe. Uh, if you agree, we'll speak them a bit about them a bit later. Mm -hmm. And our internal risks, for example, coming from Transnistria, mm -hmm. a region which is facing problems, mainly economical problems, seemingly. Mm -hmm. There is a new phase, or apparently a new phase, in the dialogue between Tiraspol and Chisinau. Mr. Shtansky and Mr. Uh, Osipov mm -hmm. seem that they, do, do, they have a better dialogue than before. Mm -hmm. Which would be your forecast, sir? This is still a problematic area. This is still a frozen conflict. Mm -hmm. There are still military, Russian military troops over there. Mm -hmm. There is a so-called Transnistrian army mm -hmm. and a totally uncontrolled area of which also Ukraine started to fear. Mm -hmm. Which is the future in that, uh, in that regard, sir? I'm cautiously optimistic because I do see, uh, after many months of inactivity, I do see movement forward in uh, contacts between uh, the authorities in Chisinau and Tiraspol, uh, including at the highest level uh, between the, the Prime Minister and, and, and Mr. Shevchuk. There are also plans to uh, reactivate the so-called 5 plus 2 format. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to note that uh, both the Russian Federation and Ukraine are participants in that format. Uh, it is an opportunity for uh, countries that might normally be adversaries to partner together for a goal that we all share, which is a solution for Transnistria that's acceptable both to Chisinau and to Tiraspol without sacrificing the territorial integrity of the Republic of Moldova. Speaking about well, the 5 plus 2 format, uh, some would say that this is not viable anymore exactly because Ukraine and Russia are right now adversaries. Should that format still be kept like this or changed somehow by excluding or adding someone else in the negotiations? Because otherwise uh, this unsuccess so far could be perpetuated. It's the only format we have right now, and I think it's very important to try to preserve it. If you start making changes, there's always the risk that the process itself will collapse. It, there are all sorts of international organizations that function, including the United Nations, that are made up of many different countries, some of which are literally at war with each other. When you have a shared goal 
which I believe exists in the case of Transnistria, which is a final resolution of the status of Transnistria within the borders of the Republic of Moldova, then I think that, that all parties, although they may have different views about their relationships with each other, can focus on that goal and can be successful. How do you see, sir, and how do the United States see a European Moldova, for example, and the European Ukraine mm -hmm. having between them, or within them, if I may say so, mm -hmm. this frozen conflict actually, and the presence of Russian military, for example. The Russian Federation has said that once the Transnistria issue is resolved, they will withdraw their troops. We take them at their word. Uh, we think that it, is, that it is time for Russian troops to be withdrawn uh, as peacekeepers. We could have international peacekeepers, or it could be a shared responsibility. Um, that, is, that is one of the issues uh, we, we are working for. In terms of Transnistria's future, under current, uh, under current conditions, uh, I think it would be, it, it, it's uh, very complicated. Uh, economically, they are suffering, but at the same time, even Transnistria's exports, they are increasing exports to the EU, to, to, to the, the right bank, to places like Romania. Uh, ideally, uh, the Republic of Moldova should have balanced uh, economic and trade ties with both the East and the West. Um, I've never really understood Russia's objection to, uh, to the Republic of Moldova uh, wanting to be part of the European Union. It does not mean that they are giving up uh, their very important trade relationship with Russia. The same is true of Transnistria. Transnistria benefits uh, from the autonomous trade status uh, through, the, uh, f through the EU regulations. That status expires at the end of the year, so it is extremely urgent for Transnistria to comply with as many of the requirements as are necessary to retain uh, special status uh, with their trade with the EU. Again, Transnistria, just as the rest of the Republic of Moldova, should have balance in their trade to, 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 to increase prosperity. And I do think that, the, that, that Chisinau can play a very constructive role in helping Transnistria with economic growth, because as I said earlier, economic growth solves many other problems. Uh, let's get back to what you've just said, sir, mm -hmm. uh, speaking about the Russian military presence in Transnistria. Uh, you've said that you should take the Russians for their word when they said that when the Transnistrian issue will be solved, they would uh, withdraw their troops from over there. Probably this will be a rough question, but can the Russians be taken for their word after they have several times breached um, for example, the discussions in Minsk regarding the eastern Ukraine, um, there is unrest going over there, there is still backing up from the Russian side for the separatist movement, there are suspicions that this uh, plan still goes on and will not stop only in uh, uh, Donetsk or Lugansk, they will be spreading towards Kharkov, Odessa and even to the uh, Danube Delta. What, what's, what's going to happen, sir? What's the United States assessment upon the uh, following events? We have many agreements and treaties with the Russian Federation, many of them national security and defense related. Uh, by and large, uh, these treaties are observed. Uh, we are fully aware of Russian aggression in Ukraine and it is a very, very disturbing trend and a tremendous mistake on the part of Russia to invade and occupy neighboring countries. It's unacceptable in the 21st century. However, there are other issues that must be addressed. There are issues elsewhere in the world. There are issues in the Middle East. There are issues uh, with respect to uh, uh, nuclear weapons and non-proliferation. We deal with the Russian Federation on many of these issues, and we know that they can play a constructive role when they choose to do so. They just did so in Iran. Yes, yes, yes. So, and that is an example. Uh, Russia played a role, for example, in, in, in the issue of chemical weapons in Syria. So uh, they, they're a member of the Security Council in the United Nations. We will continue to deal with Russia, and we will continue to deal with them as a partner in the 5 plus 2 process. Uh, and uh, we, will, we will hope for the best. On the other hand, the United States uh, has decided to somehow be very cautious with the eastern frontier of the European Union and NATO. The uh, United States decided to be 
more present in Romania or in Poland. And that uh, was quite criticized by Moscow. The shield and the military, increasing military presence, mm -hmm. the fact that the United States decided to uh, send military specialists in Ukraine, for example, to train the Ukra Ukrainian army. What do all these measures mean? Which is the, actually the American point of view about what happens in Eastern Europe right now and especially in this area? Mm -hmm. Well, the United States very, it takes very seriously the uh, security situation here in Europe uh, and based in large part on Russia's unacceptable aggression and behavior in Ukraine. So I think that the reaction uh, that, that we're seeing in Europe uh, is a very logical and normal uh, reaction. Uh, we have an obligation to all of our NATO partners uh, and we will continue to honor that obligation. We have no interest in provoking war or conflict. Uh, Moldova uh, does, does find itself in an uncomfortable uh, situation in terms of national strategy. Our president has said this conflict cannot be resolved militarily. It needs to be resolved politically and, dipl and diplomatically. And, that is, uh, and our efforts will continue to be concentrated on a political solution. Speaking about Moldova, uh, of course everyone tries to understand in Moldova what's next to come if negotiations fail, if Russia does not stop with its military aggression and if the so-called Novo Russia project will be carried on. Because President Putin himself mm -hmm. uh, has spoken a few months ago about this project, the Novo Russia. Uh, what should Moldova expect uh, from the American presence in the area? Would Moldova be somehow supported or defended in the worst case scenario of a military aggression uh, in these parts of, uh, of the Eastern Europe? We have uh, a military-to-military -military relationship with Moldova. We do conduct training. Uh, we, are, we have a very ambitious program uh, on border security to prevent uh, nuclear proliferation uh, in, in particular. Moldova has also been a, a good partner in various interoperability uh, events with NATO. There are, there are Moldovan uh, peacekeeping troops in Kosovo, for example. So there is, uh, there is a military relationship. Um, we uh, continue to rely on international standards and norms in terms of countries respecting the territorial sovereignty of each other. That was uh, egregiously violated in the case of Ukraine. I can't predict what uh, the Russian leadership wants to do. If they want to continue a completely reckless and suicidal course of expansion in, in, in contravention of international norms, then I think the, that, that we all have a much more serious problem. Uh, Moldova, in the meantime, as an independent nation, needs to take prudent steps to modernize its military, to ensure it's, that it's uh, compatible with, with, uh, with other modern military structures. We take Moldova's uh, security very seriously, but uh, none of us can be put in the position of predicting uh, what will happen and what the response would be. One final question, sir. You are uh, newly appointed here, mm -hmm. but you are very well accustomed with what Eastern Europe means, Ukraine and a bit far away uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. Would there be any possibility for Moldova to play this high wire game in trying to be friendly to the East and going, still going West? Is this possible actually, as you know, the both, uh, I don't know, geopolitical spaces? Uh, it's, not only, it's not only possible, I very much encourage it. Neither the United States nor the EU want uh, want Moldova to only deal with the West and with the EU. We think Moldova, given its history and geography, is in a wonderful position to foster cultural, political, economic and trade ties with the East. There is absolutely no reason for them not to do that. Russia does not help this process when they uh, arbitrarily impose bans on, on exports or when they threaten uh, the Moldovan guest workers in the Russian Federation. 
All that has done is discourage Moldova's engagement with Russia and the, and the eastern markets and has shifted markets even further west. We think it's to Moldova's advantage to have a good balance in its relations between east and west and we will, uh, we will continue to encourage those efforts. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much. Ne oprim aici, sperăm că n-a fost singura noastră întâlnire cu domnul ambasador, sperăm să-l mai întâlnim și în această emisiune și eventual și în alte emisiuni ale Republica TV. În sfârșit, una peste alta, am mai învățat ceva și aș mai spune un lucru. Importanța Moldovei, cel puțin din perspectiva Statelor Unite, cred că s-a văzut și atunci când Bucureștiul a așteptat trei ani după un nou ambasador american, în timp ce Chișinăul l-a primit foarte repede, iată pe domnul Petit. Ne vedem și săptămâna viitoare. Până atunci, numai bine!